welcome to this week's lecture. Now, we have seen up till now wire antennas, various types of wire antennas and how to analyze them. And we have seen while seeing the antenna parameters that basically antennas radiation efficiency depends on the effective area of an aperture effective area of an antenna. Now, wire antenna since they are by definition wires, so they do not have much width though they have some electrical width that we have shown, but that is not sufficient if we want high gains high directivity. So, for that the idea came that instead of wires if we use a two dimensional structure for antenna that means, aperture to radiate then it will be better and it turned out actually the uh, one of the first wire antenna I aperture antennas were also uh, invented in Calcutta in India by Sir J C Bose, because he was the first to use for communication purposes or to prove his experiment actually he was trying to prove that the laws of electromagnetics also applies to ap optics and for that he first used as a receiver a horn antenna which is nothing but an aperture. He called it collecting funnel, but uh, actually it was an aperture antenna. So, um, horn antenna which is very popular till today and we will see it. So, this aperture antennas are a class of antennas the examples are if I have an rectangular or any waveguide rectangular or circular or any cross section waveguide as a transmission line and suddenly I open it that means, there are no more metals. So, it then from the uh, mouth of that uh, waveguide it will start radiating. So, that is called open ended waveguide antenna then an uh, modification of that to increase the directivity that means, to increase the effective aperture is horn antenna. Then people also cut slots on the uh, conducting walls of waveguides those are slot antennas. Then there are another use that you, you use a this type of aperture antenna and use a uh, reflecting surface which is called dish antenna. So, as a reflector that dish antenna that also behaves as an aperture, but actually there should be an antenna some aperture antenna or some wire antenna at its uh, nearby. So, that that comes to that lens surface and from there it again starts takes this radiation properties. So, those dish antennas then you can have nowadays the planar antennas one of that is called patch antenna micro strip antennas. So, you have a aperture conducting aperture from there uh, put on dielectrics and from there it is radiating. So, all these are examples of aperture antenna. Now, the class the analysis technique for this aperture antennas is uh, a bit different from wire antennas why because wire antennas we have proved that if we can find the conduction current distribution on the antenna then we can find out the radiated electromagnetic field everywhere in the planet in the whole universe we can find that what is the thing. Now, here in aperture antenna case it is not always conducting current because you think of a horn antenna suppose I have a horn antenna. So, this is its radiating mouth or if I see the front view it is something like this. So, actually there are so these are all metals and suddenly there is nothing there. So, there there is no conduction current. So, we cannot find out the what is the conduction current on an aperture that is why in, but there is an electric field created here because of whatever source excited it. So, aperture antennas are analyzed by the field distribution on the aperture 
So, we will see that so all these planar antennas or aperture antennas they are analyzed in terms of field red that is there on the aperture. So, if I know somehow this field how to know that that we will see there are various uh, ways, but we can if we can guess what is the field on the aperture then we can find the field everywhere. So, it is a field um, aperture field based analysis technique. Now, another thing is this aperture to have a meaningful uh, directivity. Uh, this we have said earlier also that the both the aperture dimensions since it is a two dimensional. So, the, it has two dimensions. So, it is length and width both should be uh, a, uh, at least several wavelengths. Uh, so, that you can have a meaningful gain that means, it should have a sizable electrical area then only you can have a meaningful thing. Now, you think that at low frequency these aperture antennas are not popular because if you want to have the aperture to be of sizable uh, electrical length and since the wavelengths are very large at low frequencies. So, you, you, you require huge apertures which is not possible that is why at high frequencies particularly in micro frequencies where typically the wavelength has come down to some centimeters there you can have this uh, type of aperture structures that is why aperture antennas are mostly used at microwave frequencies. So, with this background now let us see the how to find the radiated field from an aperture whose field distribution is known. So, there are actually two techniques out of that today we will see the first technique that is called the radiation from a planar aperture by Fourier transform method. We will I think all of you know Fourier transform and we will use that Fourier transform knowledge. The, but there will be a difference here that this Fourier transform is not the time frequency Fourier transform, it is a special Fourier transform. So, to understand this let us look at the this diagram I have an aperture this this circular thing what is shown in general it can have any shape. So, this is an aperture. So, that is called as S a the this whole aperture is denoted by S a and we say that we know the tangential field that means, field on this aperture is known and that field we are calling E a. So, this whole thing is a plane there is a cut and that cut is the aperture. So, you can say that this is metal or dielectric or something and there is an aperture there. So, this for our coordinate reference we are calling that this whole uh, screen that is z is equal to 0 plane. So, the aperture is radiating in the z is z greater than 0 side and actually there are some sources definitely at z less than 0 somehow they are uh, there are various ways by which this aperture is excited. We need not go into those details because all those sources get characterized by this electric field on this, this tangential field. Actually, this comes from an uh, theorem called equivalence principle. So, if I know the field on this aperture, actually that is sufficient to characterize the excitation. Okay. So, um, now, our job is to determine the radiated field in z greater than 0. Now, let us look at some Fourier transform basic. I think all of you know Fourier transform, but in this case it is a special function. So, I do not have a function of time, I do not have a function of space. Let us say that I have a function w it is a function of x and its Fourier transform 
I can define by W and the spatial frequency I will write as k x. So, W k x I can define as minus infinity to infinity W x this is small W x e to the power plus j k x x d x. This is my definition of spatial Fourier transform. Please note this plus generally in the um, time frequency Fourier transform generally though this is also valid that we generally take this as the forward transform we take as minus, but here we are taking plus actually it is a general thing you can take anything in this case specifically for some reason the that will give us advantage later this is plus j k x. So, we can write that what will be the inverse Fourier transform in the inverse Fourier transform will be w x is 1 by 2 pi So, I can say that the variable k x and x in the spatial transform they follow the same role as t and omega in time signals Fourier analysis. Please remember that t is not equivalent to x because of this choice. T is corresponding to k x and omega is corresponding to x. This will have a profound implication, but because of our this choice generally this is the equivalence between the two. Okay. So, this is a one dimensional Fourier transform. Now, since I have aperture I need two dimension. So, what is a two dimensional Fourier transform? Suppose, I have a function of both x and y u x and y. So, it is Fourier transform I will write as and it is inverse transform Okay. So, with this background let us start. Now, we have seen that any antenna the radiated field satisfies the wave equation. So, what was the wave equation del cross del cross E minus k 0 square e is equal to minus j omega mu naught j. This was the standard wave equation and we know that this del cross del cross e that is by vector identity del dot e minus Laplace n of e vector Laplace n of e okay. and in in the region I am interested in the region z is equal z greater than 0. 
so it is a radiated zone. So, there J is 0, there is no conduction current and also the there is no charge density. So, I can write del dot E is equal to 0 and from this equation del square E plus k naught square E is equal to 0. Okay. Now, these are the two main equations that we will solve to find out E. So, I now number them actually here I have written it in the reverse order. Reverse means that is for my thing because this is a vector equation. So, let me call this my equation 1 and the divergence equation that is my it is called 2 let us say. So, these are the two main equations that we need to solve. Now, again I recall another thing of Fourier transform. Suppose Fourier transform F T I am writing is an operator, it is a time Fourier transform operator. So, time suppose I have a time function S T, what is the Fourier transform of the derivative of S T? That we know is J omega this F T S T that means, it is J omega Fourier transform of the signal S T. Obviously, this S T only the to this hold only restriction is S T should be time limited that means, A s of infinity is 0. So, for a time limited signal this is valid. Now, let me say that what will be the special part of this. So, can I say that Fourier transform of x del u x y del x will be obviously, this is a partial variable because it is two dimensional. So, this can I write as minus j k x f x u x y y minus because of that definition problem. In special case similarly, this f is an operator that is why is something curly right I am trying to write. So, for a two dimensional function what will happen to this del x? So, this will be minus j k x whole square f x u x y etcetera etcetera I can do. Why I am doing this? Because I have these persons and these persons. So, I have del square here, del del x square, del del y square, del del y square that is why I am doing this. So, let us take Fourier transform of both equation 1 and equation 2. So, I get del square del x square plus del this 
this is from the first equation just I am writing it in Cartesian coordinate. Similarly, here the second equation will give me del E x x y z del x plus del E y x y z del y plus del E a uh, e z x y z del z is equal to 0. Now, let us take Fourier transform of 1 and 2. So, this one if I take Fourier transform special Fourier transform I get del square What is this E x? E x k x k y z is Fourier transform of E x y z with respect to x and y. Here you see I am deliberately making a symbol a symbolical mistake. Actually you see that uh, where I have written there, huh? when we take Fourier transform of W x, the Fourier transform is an entirely different function from this original function. That is why we use lower case and upper case or some other notation we do because Fourier transform is a completely different function it is not same as W x, but here I am doing that where you see same notation E x y z and this thing only I am giving a sorry E k k x na actually this only k x. Hmm. Yes. No, this will be then this. Actually, this notation sir I am remaining same only by argument I am changing. You will have to remember this because it is not simply that E x y z and E they are not same functions only I am changing argument not that but if we use other notations that will get complicated that is why we are keeping the same but remembering for remembering uh, for understanding or you will have to understand that k x k y by their presence it is the Fourier transform. So, it is not the same function as E this is for notational simplicity. Okay. So, we have got these two things now I am removing this. So, these are my two things here you see I have got this variables there is some thing. 
So, I need to simplify. So, that I am doing by letting k z square is equal to this constant k naught square minus k x square minus k y square. So, then this this equation if I put that k z square thing it becomes del square e Now, this I have put in this equation just k z square. The moment I do that, you see this looks familiar, this is an wave equation. So, what is the solution of this? The solution of this is e to the power plus minus j k z z. You can put also and see that this is a solution. So, this wave equation is solved. But Remember actually this is the Fourier transform solution because this is a Fourier transform expression. Now, for them also since we are considering only outwardly propagating wave. So, the Fourier transform of an outward wave that cannot have this uh, plus solution. So, we will not take the plus solution this solution will throw away and we will take only the e to the power minus solution. So, the what will be the general solution of E? So, solution of E is E k x k y z is f k x k y e to the power minus j. I can write that this is the constant as far as z variable is constant. Now, this is yet to be determined. So, the moment this gets determined, we will be finding the solution. So, now this solution is I have obtained it from this equation. So, let it put me in the other equation. So, if I put it in the other equation this solution, you will see that we get k x f x plus k y f y plus k z f z is equal to 0, where what is k that sorry what is f x f x f y f z are components of f k x k y x y z components of f x k y or this sometimes this is also written to understand it as k dot f is equal to 0 same thing. So, what is this equation tells us? This is a very important equation and this tells us that I am trying to find f x f y f z. It says that they are not independent, two are independent because they are related by this. So, if I find two the other already gets determined. Okay? So, this is the outcome of this. Now, why this is so? Actually, if you look back, this equation came from where? This equation came from that the restriction on the radiated field that its divergence should be 0. So, that vanishing divergence put this condition that f three components are not independent, actually, there is only two degrees of freedom there. Okay. So, this solution now let me write the inverse from this solution 
now this is the solution so what is the this is the fourier transform what is the inverse transform of this inverse transform of this is e x y z is 1 by 4 pi square minus infinity to plus infinity f k x k y e to the power minus j k z z then e to the power minus j k x x minus j k y y d k x d k y. You see this is the solution this part I have written and then e to the power this is the inverse here e to the power j k x minus j k x minus j k y. Okay. So, this in simplified way I can write as where what is k dot r k x x plus k y y plus k z z. So, that is all almost that it tells us that what will be the field at any point it is simply the it can be represented can I say that this is e to the power j k dot r that means various values of x y. So, this is a plane wave can I say this is this this is a plane wave and it is basically superposition of various plane waves they are taking the values k x k y different k x k y. So, this is a spectrum because this k x k y is nothing but our spatial frequencies. So, I can say that what is the uh, radiated field that in the z greater than 0 zone the field can be represented as a spectrum of plane waves because this one is a plane wave with vector amplitude f propagating in the direction of the propagation vector k. Okay. From here we will have to take that what are the different values k z k x and k y can take. Now, from the definition of k z if you see the definition of k z this was the definition of k z k z square is equal to k 0 square a. So, here you can see that magnitude of the propagation vector that is same as k naught. Now, there are two possibilities k x square plus k y square may be greater than k naught or may be less than k naught. If k x square plus k y square greater than k naught then k z you see k z it becomes imaginary. What is the meaning of a imaginary k z? So, these are plane waves which will die down actually they are attenuating wave they are called evanescent waves and basically they contribute to the near zone of the radiation. So, near zone radiation is contributed by this evanescent modes and for this thing this k z is real for the other condition. So, they are the contribute to the radiated field since these are the only plane waves propagating outwards as their k z is real. Okay. I think in the next one 
we will see that the, till now we have not got the f value because we have said the solution is this, but this f we have not determined how to find f. So, that we will see in the next class. Thank you.